But hold on a second, before you do that, there is an, an interesting and important exercise to be done first. Because when you're gonna start playing the horn, what's gonna happen is the horn is gonna start playing you, which means you're gonna start moving your fingers and what you will hear is not what you hear without the horn. It will be what the horn plays, you know? It's like when I'm playing the piano, I'm doing this. I'm not really hearing anything. You know, I can, you know, I mean, you know, it is mechanical. I can hear what I'm playing, but I cannot play what, I'm not playing what I hear. And I should be able to play what I hear which means it should go from the hearing to the playing. For example, which means here I'm really playing what's here. It goes from here to there, not the other way around. And that's the trap when you are playing an instrument, that very often it goes the other way. There is a good way to practice this, is to mute your playing. For example, if I do this. You see, I am really hearing something and I know how I can play it, but the fact that I don't play it leads to the fact that I don't hear it on the instrument, so I know what I'm hearing is really what I am hearing as a musician, not as an instrumentalist. So same goes with this exercise that I just described. You take your horn and you're going to play the bass, but you're not going to play it. You're going to sing it and you're going to move your fingers along without blowing in your horn, without any sound coming out of the instrument. If you feel more comfortable, you can even put the instrument in the mouth and hum. And then, of course, comes the moment where you're going to do drums and bass. I apologize for the saxophone fingerings, which are obviously very wrong. And then, when you feel comfortable with that, the last step of the way is you do play your instrument. And in some cases, you can even hum and play at the same time, for those who know how to do it. So that's even better, because you keep that voice feel, you know, that really is a link to your internal hearing. That's difficult with whistling. That's how you practice it with any instrument. Of course, it doesn't sound like a bass anymore because my whistle is very much in the treble register, but it, you can still hear the, the bass line. The notes are right. So by doing this exercise all the way the way I showed you, you are learning how to feel like a rhythm section. And that is something that any jazz musician should be able to feel because when you play with a rhythm section, you should feel like a rhythm section. Otherwise, there will be no real osmosis between you and the rhythm section. There will just be you know, intellectual interplay. And to me, that's not gonna lead to improvised composition. That's just gonna lead to playing notes. To get to improvised composition, you really need to feel everything that's going on. So when you're gonna be in a group setting, playing with a rhythm section, you need to feel like a rhythm section to identify with those guys and be them and play them and feel them. And that's why it is so important to do these exercises that I showed you all the way. And that's also why the instrument comes last because the feeling of a rhythm section is something that doesn't have anything to do with the instrument you're playing.